Uh, so this one is called closing remarks. One. After three months of erotic literature and hushed conversations with friends, I decided to see if I could discover upon the map of my body the X, which marked the spot which I had until that time never believed possible for a woman. After the appropriate amount of hesitation and startling explorations, I discovered that what lay between my thighs could bloom like Georgia O'Keeffe on canvas and I could taste every colour that goes through my body Dance down my spine, quick tango at the base, quick silver fingers, quick fuse of a firework that burst across my eyes as though they were the sky. I had never known that the ocean could inhabit my body, that my voice could ring like incantations, a call to prayer across a rocky shore. I had once been so afraid to explore, so afraid to run, believing that I would cut myself on the temptation, only to discover that I could fly. Two, the first time you ever kissed me on a friend's spare mattress under a golden November sky, revelation enveloped me like the kind of warmth that persists for days and weeks. Your kisses grew out of my mouth and onto my body, wearing aching saplings with blue black leaves along my neck and my breast and my waist. Your kisses grew out of my mouth and into moans as your mouth coaxed my body reminding me of how your smile had teased my own for so many weeks before our lips finally met. You and I learned how to be lovers together. We taught each other how bodies work, but for months after we first began to make love, I could taste the ocean on my tongue, but I didn't orgasm and every book I had ever read only spoke of the perfect love as though it were a formulaic probability. If I am a naked sonnet, 14 empty lines waiting for you to fill me with your metaphors, to kiss me like the silences that fall softly between these words and to tap your fingers against my thigh in alliterative prayer, what level of poetic proficiency would you require to make me orgasm? Three, the problem with not orgasming is that it makes girls like me try to understand it mathematically as though it were a problem, as though love were a conundrum of variables and you and I need to reach fulfillment in order to enjoy sex. The problem with life outside erotically charged literature is that there are more variables than body A and body B and I want to celebrate the fact that our bodies are in love. I don't need an orgasm to know that the way your tongue curls around my navel and then lower before heading back up to my mouth is a tidal wave of emotion that could leave me gasping under its waters at high tide and parched like a desert at low tide. This world has convinced us that wrapping up is necessary and that in order to be normal, a sexual relationship must hinge upon orgasms. But no one has ever touched me the way that you touch me and our love is perfect because the thirst for a climax doesn't tamper with the plot. <sighs> Three months into our love, I finally began to scale the summit and last week I realized that all my best orgasms have been with you. And this poem is not to say that I don't need your love, but there isn't a, con a variable or an equation that could alter the fact that I know my body better than anyone and not a conclusion in the world that could lead me to believe that the entirety of the ocean isn't as beautiful as my first glimpse of it. Thank you.